morning, everyone. Welcome to another AppSheet Training webinar. I'm joined here with Clark James. How's it going, Clark? Oh, Austin, you already know it's already going all well today. So busy. <laughs> we are yes, working sir. today. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, completely understand that. Well, sweet. We're excited uh, to have Dustin here and I'm going to take a few minutes to let everybody else join. Uh, want to welcome y'all to our webinar. Make sure to join in with the chat um, and let us know where you're joining from and what you're excited to learn about today. We got an exciting webinar coming up talking about our visitor check-in app and how to create that with AppSheet. Plus, we've got some cool uh, features that we're going to add into this app, such as Google Chat. I'm excited to talk about that <laughs> one. <in chat. laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun. So y'all come in. We're going to take some time. We'll get started right at 10 o'clock. Um, and so we do have a bit of time before then. And we're going to go ahead and start with an icebreaker question that y'all are free to join in and comment on. So our discussion before we get started. Um, what's up, Wally? Nice to see you. Um, what are some feature requests we would like to see in AppSheet and why? So talking about just the editor version for all you app creators out there. Um, what are some features that you're like wondering about? I wish AppSheet would do this. Um, and so Clark, I'll pass it off to you. What are some of those feature requests that you've been like thinking about? Uh, yeah, honestly, there's a ton of stuff that my team and I have, have kind of been uh, wanting. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm trying to think of the biggest one, just to save time. Um, I think one of I think one of mine that I've been thinking about for a while is actions. Whenever you change the name no, of Austin, an action, they have actions. They have those. Oh yeah, yeah, they oh, do yeah. have actions. <laughs> When you change when you change the name of an action, I wish it would stay with the whatever like wherever you have it on the on your views. So like if you change the name of an action, you have to go back to the views that you have it attached mm. to and add it back in. So um I'm not a software developer, but um it to me it seems like that's associated with a name and not a key. So right. um, just, just on my limited knowledge. Line, mm -hmm. Yeah, on that same line with, with actions, one thing that I've wanted yesterday, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, why don't I have this anymore? I wish they could hide system actions. We don't, I don't, okay. we don't have that right now. And so we have this super long list of, let's say we have 30 tables, right? Right. Uh, you've got 90 system actions just generated automatically, just add, add edit, and delete, right? That doesn't include Do any you, of your references. That doesn't include uh -huh. any of your map coordinates. So. Do you mean hide them just in the editor or like? Yeah, just hide them yeah. in the editor. Just, just so that we that. can see. Well, <laughs> I don't know where it is. Yeah. In case you they guys are wondering, the, yeah. uh, I'm used to the legacy editor. So uh -huh. the whole, I feel like a boomer, you know? Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, I'm not sure about in the new editor if they well, have Austin, that feature. What do you mean? Of course they have it in the legacy. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. In the in the new editor, what I do is cuz I thought they had it broken up between like the actions that you created and the system generated actions. So, I just like drag that bottom part down. Cuz it's like Yeah, but you, you can, still have to like comb through them. Yeah. Right. Oh, you still I see. Have to come through them. It's not, you know, and that's such a small, small thing. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that's something I was literally thinking to myself yesterday. Yeah. It looks like uh, Christian said, "I wish I could man manipulate the UX much more." Yeah. I feel like that's a common thing for AppSheet. Um, kind of the argument there is it's designed for business workflows. And so it's really fast at creating just yeah. like efficient business automations um, with not with limiting the UX design part kind of takes care of all that for you. So there's like other platforms that allow you to use, you know, more elaborate UX design features, but it takes like four times as long to just design one view because you're having to 
you know, go from a blank slate, whereas AppSheet is kind of just like intuitively designing that for you. Um, even as far as like, you know, telling this actor to do this, AppSheet can kind of create that for you right out of the box. Let's see, Wally, can, can users, um, Users show online app sheet. Not following with that one, but yeah. Um, do yeah, you, I'm not quite sure. I understand what that question was. If you could expand yeah. that a little bit more, yeah. we we can probably answer it. But yeah, let's see. Uh, Other f oh, go ahead, Clark. I was going to ask Dustin where in Texas he lived. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, we're, we're from also Texas, in, Dustin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. I'm in Dallas, Austin's in College Station, mm -hmm. home of Texas A&M. Whoop! Yeah, for all hey, you whoop. Aggie fans out there, there we go. Denton. All right, that's cool. I've got some. Oh, nice. Got some family over there. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys didn't know, Austin is my cousin-in-law, so we're not <laughs> technically related, but I do see him at Christmas, and it's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> well i think it's pretty fun all right <laughs> i'm just kidding austin is the greatest all right okay so let's see we got about two minutes left any other features that you guys are like what if app sheet could do this um kind of been thinking about um one feature that i was talking about with one of the guys was just like an action for looping like you can create mm. a looping action in app sheet, but it would be awesome if there was just like a, a different type of action that was just called looping. And that way it would kind of just create that, that feature for you. Um, I feel like a lot of ours are revolving around actions um, just because that's kind of what we well, do. I think we understand that the UX can't be modified too, too much. There's not much that we mm. can do without making it overly complicated uh -huh. um and automations you can pretty much do whatever you want if you understand the, yeah. the api workflows um, yeah but sweet i do okay. wish the pagination was better i agree with that dustin mm -hmm. yeah. I, I do wish that was better um it can be a miserable experience going through templates <laughs> It can also be an awesome experience. It's both it's both my favorite thing and my least favorite thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have heard actually that in Microsoft um, documents that they actually, templates formatting actually work a little bit better, which is interesting. For Microsoft? Uh, yeah. So like if you create a Microsoft doc, um, it the, the formatting for some reason works. A little, that's what Ben was saying, I believe. Um, interesting yeah and uh, let's see when kim says when creating a list it would be handy to use a kind of sql syntax instead of not mm. i can't nice. tell you how many times kim that i have been in app sheet and i've started writing sql queries yeah. <laughs> and i'm like oh man i'm like yeah you know 10 lines deep yeah. of sql and it's yeah i <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Switching between the syntaxes is cumbersome sometimes. All right. Sweet. Well, thank you guys for jumping in the conversation with us. That was fun. Um, maybe some of these feature requests will be added. There is a way to add feature requests into the AppSheet community. So maybe we can add some of these ideas in there. Um, I know sometimes they get, you know, bumped up and then um, added to their to their product um, requests. So sweet, it is 10 o'clock. So let's go ahead and get started with the webinar. All right, before we jump right in, I did want to take a minute um, to let you know that Apsi Training is powered by Crew Technologies. Crew Technologies helps empower your business by developing results-oriented um, business automations through no-code technologies. Our professional services include no-code development, no code consulting and no code training. That's uh, me. Learn more. Know. All those things are me. So. 
<laughs> Learn more about how your business can get started with Crew Technologies Professional Services today by scheduling a call with us. Um, in that call, you'll get a business discovery, business use case guide, and how we can help your business unlock the true power of no-code technologies. Follow the link in the description below to learn more about our professional services. Crew Technologies app sheet, it's what we do. All right, thank you guys for joining today. Um, today, we're gonna go over an overview of our um, business use case, and then we're gonna talk about that use case guide. And then after that, we'll jump into an app sheet demo with Clark, he's gonna show you how to build out a feature as well as show you what our app does. Then we'll jump into a live Q and A and we'll wrap up with um, learning more about AppSheet training. So make sure you stick around till the end because we do have some information there that'll be important if you're serious about uh, learning more about AppSheet. So let's go right into an overview. Um, by the end of this webinar, you're gonna learn how to utilize AppSheet in the office for automating visitor check-ins by understanding the use case creating key features within an AppSheet demo, using the app to streamline your check-in process and answering your questions with live Q&A. So definitely wanna make sure to stick around till the end, that way you can get your questions answered there. And as Clark is demoing or doing the, the feature um, update, make sure to um, put your questions in the chat bot um, and we'll be able to get to those. Sometimes we'll stop during the middle, if it makes sense to, or we'll save your question until the live Q&A portion. All right, and let's go ahead and get into the use case guide. So we created this company called Razor Tech. It's a fictional company, but it was fun to do uh, to do that. Um, and the company is Razor Tech. It's, they're currently using paper forms to organize and track visitor check-ins. Uh, the company would like to create a visitor check-in system uh, that allows these employees to see to add new visitors see who's arriving visitors who are currently in the building and a view of history of previous visitors um so basically digitizing their paper form check-in process into an app sheet app what this is going to allow them to do is digitize that process with app sheet so they're going to be able to manage your vis visitor logs more efficiently automate notifications with google chat create check-ins with the click of a button and then complete tasks on time with Google Calendar. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this app sheet demo. Oh, skipped ahead too quick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, Clark, um, you're up, buddy. You're ready for me to share your screen? Yeah, definitely. Right. Sweet. So welcome in, guys. Uh, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna be showing you guys uh, a little bit of this app that we've built. Um, this is that visitor check-in app. Um, so I just kind of want to show you some of the features. Um, if this is too small, in fact, let's just make it here. That's probably good. If it's not, feel free to comment. Let us know uh, yeah. ASAP. We get that fixed. But uh, this is that check-in app. Um, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't uh, doing anything in, in our live app. So this is a copy of it. Uh, and so this is Razor Test. I um, thought that was really clever. Uh, but... <clears throat> Basically what this app is, is it's a way for people to schedule visits and then check in and out of those uh, visits. <clears throat> so I can create a new visit here. Um, as you can see, these are gonna be our visitors. We can choose any of these people or we can choose a new one. Uh, we're, we're just gonna pick one. Let's do Justin Dockin. Uh, he's going to be doing a delivery uh, today uh, around 11 10 that sounds great uh now one thing that is important is for this app specifically is are going to be our host and i'll show you why in a little bit um but for now let's do kendall polk she's a fun person we're just going to have her there so once you finish that new visit it's going to take you to your upcoming visits so you'll see that i have got four in here um for today uh justin Dawkins is that one that we uh, just put in, right? <clears throat> so there's a couple things that we have here. Uh, the first one is going to be this button here, add to Google Calendar. Uh, this button is actually just a URL um, and it takes you to your personal Google Calendar and creates an event for this time. Uh, so that's super handy. Um, you can add a location, you can add a description. Um, the only thing I don't think you can add is attendees. And I could be wrong on that, but that's the only thing I think I don't think you can add. 
So pretty nice there. Um, the second thing that we have here is this one, this check-in. So this is going to mark them as checked in. It's going to put a timestamp. And then it's going to send a Google chat to a space. Um, so we, we've done that by using an, an automation and a bot. And we'll show you how that works in a little bit. But just to show you that it works, I'm going to click this check-in. We're going to know what this sync for a second. And then you should have just heard that noise, right? I've got this here. Oh, I totally forgot to change the name of this. And that's on me. Uh, but we have this Google chat. <laughs> uh, Justin Dawkins is here. Uh, Kindle Pulp, please go meet them. Um, so as you can see, we have our visitor. And then we also have our uh, host. <clears throat> so pretty neat stuff. Pretty neat stuff. Uh, we also have currently here, um, so what this is, is you have the ability to check people out. Um, so if I look at today, I should be able to find Justin Dawkins. I'm going to check him out, and he will no longer appear in this list. And then now he will be in our history table. So pretty nice stuff. We have our visitors and our employees. I forgot that I uh, deleted that that one Austin. <laughs> Uh, but that's that's pretty much our app. If you uh, like the way this app looks, it is in that new desktop preview mode. Um, so it's pretty neat. I, I do enjoy it. Um, but yeah, if we would like to, we can actually go ahead and show those steps uh, for what Sweet. we're actually going to be doing today. Awesome. All right. So next up, here's your steps. Yeah, next up, here's my steps. Uh, so we're going to, uh, like I said, we're going to talk about that Google Chat feature. Uh, this is using an API, and it's using Pipe Dream in order to accomplish our goal. Um, so if you haven't looked into those tools, I definitely recommend looking into them. They're pretty sweet. Uh, I'll show you a little bit, but we can't go too far in depth because of time constraints. Uh, so otherwise, I would just be hanging out with you guys all day. <laughs> Uh, so let's go ahead and check out our app. Uh, and so Austin, you can go ahead and share that, that screen. Uh, so here's our app. Hopefully you guys can see, uh, we have three tables, just employees, visitors, and visits. Um, I'm going to show you those actions over here as well, just to make sure that you guys have a kind of, have an understanding of what these things are actually doing. Uh, for instance, this Google chat link, uh, it's got this complicated looking formula. Um, if you haven't seen our most recent blog post, it actually goes into a lot of depth on um, what this function, this URL actually does, what the different pieces are, and how you can actually utilize it. So uh, recommend definitely checking that out. Um, I believe it also has some chat stuff too. Yeah, very brief. The blog, <laughs> the blog focuses on the the calendar feature. Yeah, I I think the calendar feature is really really nice. If you can, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously this can be completely dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. So as you can see, we have scheduled visit time plus uh, six thirty, which we're minus six uh, time zone, and so it's thirty minutes in the future. So pretty sweet stuff there. Uh, like I said, definitely recommend. Then we have this check in. Check-in date, check-in time, pretty simple. Check out today, now, pretty sweet. Uh, and then we have this CSV export. Uh, so there's pretty simple stuff. Uh, hopefully everybody's on track with us. Um, now, for this bot, I'm actually going to create this automation from scratch for you guys uh, so that we can all see it. Um, so what we're going to do... Um, we're going to create our first automation. This is my first one I've ever made, Austin. Are you proud of me? <laughs> You're doing great, Clark. And we're going to we're gonna go ahead and name each one of these pieces because uh, it's best practice. Even though it takes a little bit of time, it is best practice to name everything. Um, so for our bot, this is going to be chat uh, after check-in. Cool, cool, cool. 
cool. We've got that up there. We're going to configure this event. Now, I want this to happen. If you remember how we had it in our demo, this was off of a button press. So anytime you have a button press, it's going to be a data change. Uh, so we'll name this uh, check for check-in. I'm going to put a space or that's going to bug me. We've got data change. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have this on updates only. Right, so the only time I ever want this bot to run is when we press that button and we update the check-in time. Okay, so this is going to be on the visits table. And we're gonna have a fancy schmancy condition. Um, let's do, and I'm gonna use our and any extension just to make sure I've got these things in there. So the two things, the the one thing that I really care about is check-in time. So we're going to use this. And actually, I'm going to use it twice. But you don't have to do this. I'm kind of going above and beyond. But that's just kind of the, that's just the kind of guy I am. <laughs> uh, so uh, check-in time, we want this to not be blank is not blank and then another set of parentheses and then here we need um this is more of a complicated expression and you don't tend to need it but i like to use it this row before <clears throat> dot check in time does not equal this row after that check in time and so all that's really doing is just saying, okay, first off, I want to make sure that check-in time isn't blank. That means that somebody is here. And the second thing is going to be uh, that it, when updates that happen on this row, um, <clears throat> this, this row before, this row after, this is the only thing that changes. Uh, if the, if the check-in time doesn't change, I don't want to run the bot. Um, so, if for whatever reason you check someone in and then you had to check them out and check them in again, then I want it to run. But um, actually, for not let's not do this. Is it a true value? Yeah, this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> All right. So bypass security filters. I usually suggest doing these on bots. Uh, there's a few areas where I wouldn't. Um, but for things like this, I, I, I recommend it. It just makes the uh, troubleshooting process a lot easier if you can't. Um, and then we actually don't want a data action. We want to run a task. So this task is going to be Google Chat API. Great. We're on a task. This is going to be a custom task. I already have a task in here that I'm not going to use. <laughs> we're going to create a custom one. So this is going to be to call a webhook. And I've got my copy pasta over here just so I don't have to copy the, the body. Uh, but I can show you what that looks like. So here we've got a pretty simple text expression. Uh, it's just visitor, full name is here host computed name please go meet them so if you remember our test bot over here we've got justin docking i'm gonna change this this is gonna bother me can i do that yeah and view space details uh, click that again yeah view space details edit great yeah all right this is going to be our razor test chatbot and then click the emoji i think there should be a if you wanted to change the emoji, the emoji. To, yep, and you can add the oh baby, See, add, add the laptop. The more you know. Uh, if we don't have Batman, what about Superman? Perfect. This is great. I love it. <laughs> so we have Superman here as our Razor Test chatbot. I'm sure that Austin wanted me to use their logo, and I didn't, so I apologize. Uh, if, if you guys can tell, I don't always follow the rules. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we did uh, copy paste uh, our body in here. So like I said, full name, computed name, you can say that here. Full name, computed name, like that. Uh, now we need to actually get our API going. Um, so I'm over here in Pipe Dream. 
We've got a couple in here. I'm going to click the one that we named Google Chat. If you like, I said, if you haven't used PipeDream before, definitely recommend uh, looking at some videos to get some more information. Uh, but basically, all you need to know for this is that we have our trigger here um, and our unique URL to actually trigger that workflow. So I'm going to copy this trigger. And then I'm actually going to go to our chatbot. So if you go here into our our space, it's not really a it's not really a bot. It's a it's a space. I'm going to go to apps and integrations, and I'm going to manage our webhooks. Uh, so we've got this one here, which is an old one. I'm going to add a new one. This is going to be app sheet to chat. Uh, oh, and we could actually include an avatar URL. That's great. So, did I even add one? Yeah, that's where you would put the the pipe dream URL. Perfect. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, so now we have our app sheet to chat uh, API. Uh, we now need to copy this one here. This is for mm -hmm. our, our Google Chat um, URL. We're gonna copy that, and then I'm gonna go back into app sheet, and we're actually gonna just gonna paste this right there, just smack right there. We're going to make sure everything else looks good. Not specified is fine. This is a JSON body, as you can see here. Uh, we could um, do a full on body template. But we're, I think it might yeah. need to be post to the. Um, I think it'll work either way. Okay. I could be wrong, but I think it yeah. will. Um, yeah, I think that's you good. You can run this asynchronously. Usually that doesn't matter. But so I'm going to save this. We could also add more steps into this bot. Maybe we want to notify them via email. Maybe we want to know, uh, let the visitor know who is going to be meeting them, um, what have you. But yeah. uh, that's pretty much it. Um, we can now test this. So I'm going to open this up. As you can see, I've got a couple in here. Um, and I want to edit this again because I don't want to be it. I want Kindle to be it. Now you know. So Cody Man, like I said, we have this Google Chat or the Google Calendar here. And then this is going to be our Google Chat feature. So I'm going to go ahead and press this. I'm going to let this sync for a second. And if you heard that ding, that means you know it worked. Boom. There it is. Kindle, please go meet them. Uh, Kindle, if you're here, you need to go meet them. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's awesome. pretty much it for, for that stuff. Um, it, yeah, I definitely recommend checking out those resources on pipe dream. Uh, mm -hmm. and if you know how to use APIs guys, there's no limit. There's, mm -hmm. there's no limit. There's so yeah. many things you can do. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, let's go back through, through the steps real quick, just so <laughs> we can make sure everybody watching um understands where to go and how to build that and then if you want to after we go through the steps clark if you want to walk them through now that it's all built kind of just a recap of what that um automation entails definitely um, sweet so remember to make sure obviously create that new bot and then do your naming conventions there alert the chat room um and then when you're alerting the chat room your first step is to call a webhook via pipe dream. And so all that is saying is you need to go to pipe dream and create a new workflow in pipe dream. Pipe dream will then generate that unique URL for you to plug in to Google chat. After that, you're going to add the Google chat URL that, um, from Google chat to app sheet. And then once you do that, you have your automation set up and then you'll be able to test that Google chat bot. So um, yeah, I'm gonna pass it back over to Clark and he can kind of just show you end to end what that automation looks like. Yeah, so again, we do have, uh, like I said, cause we wanted this off of a button press. We do have this check-in. It's going to update our check-in time. Uh, this will be blank. If you can look at our table, we've got check-in time. This is left blank. Um, on the form. And I believe that's also off a of slice, but <clears throat> so we have an action <clears throat> that updates that column. 
and then our bot checks for that thing. So our bot is going to have that condition. It's going to check for a check-in time, and it's also going to have this here. This row before does not equal this row after. Um, so I like to include those. You don't always have to. Mm -hmm. Then we have simple uh, step here <clears throat> to call a webhook. We went to Pipe Dream to get our custom URL from Pipe Dream. Then we took it to our Google Chat new our new Google Chat space. You could put this in any space that you wanted. Uh, mm -hmm. We made a custom space for this so that we wouldn't get blown up uh, while we were yeah. testing. <laughs> uh, but you could put this in any space you wanted as long as it has this here apps and integrations. We're going to manage that webhook, and then there it is. So I've got the name of it, which the fact that this doesn't have capitals. Is it app sheet? Yeah. Capital mm -hmm. S? Yeah. Yep. App sheet to chat. And, and so that, I yeah. Copy pasted this, my URL into this space here and saved that. Okay. Then we took that URL. We're going to copy it. Uh, if you do this and copy it here, it also should work. Now you know. Uh, but we took that in here and we pasted that into our URL. So it's going to send that request to that URL. And then that's what's going to actually trigger this bot. Um, then we just have a simple body paragraph here. We could make this whatever we wanted, but this is what we needed. So uh, I think that's all the steps. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, um, there you have it, guys. Um, that's pretty simple automation there. Um, obviously, this isn't using the new Google Chat feature. This is kind of a different version of that if you're not ready to use like the Google Cloud bucket setup or anything like that, um, but you are familiar with APIs and calling webhooks, um, then this is a great way to just kind of quickly do that with no code. Um, and we didn't go too in depth on the pipe dream feature, but it's it's very like step by step. It'll walk you through. Um, you just create a new uh, workflow in pipe dream, and then you're gonna just click that HTTP request, um, and it's a post, and then that will set up your configuration event inside of pipe dream, um, and then from there it just generates that link for you, and and that's kind of the only thing that we may have not touched on too much um yeah so if we just want to quickly demo that clark um so we'll just click yeah. that new button mm -hmm. it's working what's that I see the, prog the progress bar is working oh yeah <laughs> pipe dreams going a little bit taking its time yeah so this is kind of like an underlying layer just because we have a little bit of extra time be able to show you guys this and um, right after this, we're going to have time for live Q&A, so make sure to start um, putting your questions in. I see some people have um, started putting some questions in, so we'll make sure to get to those. Let's see if this this loads here for us. It's going. Almost there. Uh, <laughs> it's right on wow. the edge, man. Yeah, I... I haven't seen Pipe Dream take that refresh. long before. I yeah. haven't either. I'm going to refresh. That's interesting. Um, if you guys didn't know, the first step in any IT troubleshooting is turn it off and turn it back on again. Uh, so we're going <laughs> to use that now. And while this is loading, I'm going to start looking at some of these questions. Dustin Whitmore said, what are your thoughts on using Google Forms to capture sign-in data? Wait, can I just put this, make mm -hmm. this pop up? Okay. <laughs> I love, yes, I love this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. What are your thoughts on uh, about using Google Forms to capture sign-in data from visitors and connecting that spreadsheet as a data source in AppSheet? Uh, Austin, do you? Uh, Let's see. Want to take it? Google Forms to capture sign-in data from visitors and connecting that uh, spreadsheet as a data source in AppSheet, so guests can sign themselves in from their device. Oh, interesting. So. <clears throat> Um, basically using a Google form as your, um, like you said, your data capture piece. That way they're not active users on the app. Um, <clears throat> I don't see why that would uh, be an issue for the app. 
Um, yeah, so I've I've done this a few times. Uh, some clients needed this specifically um, <clears throat> because they have, uh, say, 700 employees and they only have to do one thing a week, right? Um, yeah. And so it's it's I I do think that it works. Um, you're not going to get that that app sheet experience, right? Uh, mm. By um, you know, having used that Google form, uh, but there's a lot of things you can do in Google forms, right? Um, and it is still customizable, even if I do think that it's ugly. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, great question. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, it does work how you, how you intend it to. Mm -hmm. um, also apologies guys, pipe dream does not want to load for us today. So yeah, super fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm Bass glad it worked for the demo, C. though. Yeah, honestly, that's great. <laughs> uh, see see I'm catching up on the stream. Feature request I'd like is better white labeling and monetization for micro software as a service development. Nice. Yes, agreed. Yeah. Uh, PyTream can run Python. Cool. Uh, Robert Dawson. I think I might use this versus Google Cloud Functions. It looks easier to set up. Uh, it is a little bit easier to set up. Um, so yeah 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 it's, it's definitely it's pretty nice yeah it's a nice um like no code extension tool what we've been calling them is like the no code tech stack um so you have mm -hmm. app sheet pipe dream and then google sheets would be the data source for this one so those are kind of the three different um technologies that are used within this one application um also, just a quick shout out, uh, no code list. If you haven't heard of that website, um, features a bunch of different no code tools. So if you're interested in learning about what other no code tools are out there, definitely check out no code list. Um, that's a great resource to see what other no code tech stacks people are already building on. All right, um, let's see what other questions we've got up here. We do have a few more minutes. All right, um, let's see. We got Robert again saying he would like to see the color, the color bands. It's common. I do think and color bands would be pretty great. I agree with that. What, I I guess I'm not too familiar with what, what that is. What is that, Clark? Uh, color band. Um, so, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Robert. Who said that? Robert, uh, but essentially, uh, if you want to show my screen again, um, we have yeah. we have this right here. Um, in fact, I don't even have to do this. I've got it here. If I go to my upcoming visits and I click on this, this is uh, now red, right? This is basically color banding. Uh, oh. So it color colors the whole row, so right. you can you. It's very you know. Um, sometimes it's really, really good. I would say if they ever do, uh, utilize this feature, uh, it's something to be utilized, uh, in a small amount, right? If you've got mm -hmm. every rose a different color and they're red and blue and green, uh, it's going to get chaotic really quick. Um, oh, so, oh, this is the ability to change yeah, different by colors. A, okay. Filter condition by a format rule. Format. Yeah. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. All right. I, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what you're saying. Highlighting the entire row a uh, different color. Okay. Yeah. I get it now. Uh, so yeah. uh, I do I think guess that, it, that would be a nice feature. Um, as you can see, they kind of have it in mm -hmm. um, in the desktop preview, but it's only for the row that you have selected. Um, yeah. Similar to if you click on a view here or if you click on a view here, it's going to highlight that view. Mm -hmm. This is just highlighting the actual row that you're looking at. Yeah. Right. Got it. Yeah. That would be a helpful feature. Okay. So Robert's also saying, um, would like us to talk about users really quickly. He's building um, an app for a bakery and don't know the users logging in. Mm. So if you don't know the users logging in, is this a, um, subscription service. Yeah. Or maybe is it like a front kiosk, like menu yeah. type of thing? What, is, what does that look like, like for you, Robert? Yeah. 
Um, um, let's see. Delays. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was if saying... It's, if it's a kiosk kind of thing, um, in those moments, you're actually going to be using a, a Publisher Pro type app. Um, and so uh, okay, what kiosk. that does, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't allow for user sign-in. Uh, mm -hmm. You can have an unlimited amount of users. Um, and I, it's like a flat fee per month. Uh, awesome, yeah. do you know? Yeah, I think it's like $50 a month. Yeah, 50 bucks a month. You can have as many users as you want. The The issue, the problem with that is uh, there's no user sign-in. And so you can't use like the user email expression or user mm -hmm. role. Um, you have to kind of do all of those expressions by hand based on certain things. And so there's a lot of ways you can get around uh, using the user email function. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Publisher Pro, if you go to the app sheet pricing model and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it's like... A, that I'm just going to show you. Yeah. Yeah. So I go to app sheet pricing, search that on Google. So I've got starter core enterprise enterprise plus. If you scroll down here beneath frequently asked questions, you'll see this need public apps. So yeah, 50 bucks a month. You click on this and it's going to, uh, you'll have to talk with a salesperson. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing that's key, Robert, is that um, any, you can't have two, different types of apps on the same plan. Um, so if you have a public app, you can't have it on the same account as your regular core apps. Um, so you would need two different accounts to make that happen. Um, but yeah, unlimited users, 50 bucks a month. Pretty nice. Yeah. Sweet. Great questions, Robert. Um, yeah. So um, you may be able to do that with core too. Um, just the the thing with that is, is if you want users to sign in, um, like just thinking about like a typical restaurant experience, like I'm not usually signing in to a restaurant to make an order, right? I'm usually just like placing my order. Um, and so it might not be that big of an issue um, for, for that reason. Um, to have like users sign in to the restaurant menu. Um, but yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on that Clark for like a restaurant experience? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess you could utilize your core plan and just have two users uh, as your kiosks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I feel like all, all you would do is like enter your name for your order and then select the, the different items that you want. Uh, yeah, I guess that, that would work. Um, you just need to have um, Google accounts for each kiosk. Um, um, yeah. But that, that honestly would probably, that would probably work too. Um, yeah. And you probably, you wouldn't have to spend the 50 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Um there are also like ways with public apps to add like user settings and user permissions. It's, it's not as like, it's definitely not as secure as using the Google OAuth um, authentication right. system on the core plans, but you can create a similar type of experience with a public app and user settings. Um, but yeah, Robert, if, if you do need help with that, feel free to sign up for a tech talk and we can like further discuss this and make sure we're getting you the proper resources there. What I recommend, Robert, I know that you kind of already have your own workflow, I'm sure, but what I would recommend is actually just having QR codes at the front of the bakery and then people can scan the QR code with their phone and then using mm -hmm. a Publisher Pro app, they would fill in an order. Um, mm -hmm. That way you're not having to use your own tech. Uh, they're, they're not touching things and breaking things uh mm -hmm. launch in march well best of luck to you man yeah. uh, soon <laughs> yep. uh so but that's that's kind of what i would do it would i think that would ease your you know that's not something that people have to troubleshoot it's just a qr code um, mm -hmm. and that's the future right now is, is just qr codes everywhere uh all, yeah. the, all the you know pdf menus and stuff in restaurants uh, mm -hmm. but that's yeah 
Nice. Very cool. All right. Well, let's see. Do we have any other thoughts, um, Clark, for any of these other questions? I think everybody else was just commenting on the on the icebreaker question initially. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great discussion though. Thanks for thanks for asking those questions, Robert. Yeah, I appreciate um, that, Robert. I love it when people are engaging. That's it makes yeah. it fun for me. Otherwise, yeah. I just have to listen to Austin all day. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know yeah. how that goes. We don't want to. We don't want to do that. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, for you guys that are still here um, and want to learn more about how to take your apps to the next level, um, I do have quick presentation for our app sheet training um, subscribers. Um, so let's go ahead and move over there. All right. So we're going to review. Um, what we discussed today, we went over an overview, our use case guide, did our app sheet demo. We had our live Q and A and we are now ready to move on to learn more. So you can become a part of our growing community at appsheetrain.com. You can sign up for free. There's over 7,000 users on appsheetrain.com. Um, you can explore and build with innovative tools like AppSheet Toolbox that you saw Clark demo today. And there's also learning paths if you upgrade um, to our professional subscription. So I'll talk more about that now. You're going to want to find a path that works for you. So if you just want to stay in the free tier, you're still learning about AppSheet and want to see if it's a right fit for your business model or for your business workflows, um, go ahead and stick in that community section. That's where you get access to like our toolbox, our webinars, and our blogs. Those are great free resources that we want to present to you guys to help make sure we're providing value and um, the best material on AppSheet and no code in general. So that way um, you guys can build the tools that you want and the solutions for your customers or for your business. Um, if you upgrade to the professional subscription, this is someone who's ready to go with AppSheet or with no code, and you're wanting to learn the best practices to build the applications that you need. So maybe you want to build a suite of apps or you have one app that you need to run an internal business process. I um, mean, you want to make sure you build it right. So that way, when your business is scaling, um, the app can can grow um, with the way your business is growing. So this is going to include everything in community, um, immersive learning experience. We have new courses and updates continually. You also get access to an AppSheet certification and you'll get some discounts on consulting. Um, so in order to get that professional subscription, we're asking everyone to go ahead and schedule a tech talk with me. Um, and we can take down your use case um, and make sure we get you um, the next steps in order to be able to move forward with your professional subscription. Um, next, we have consulting and development. So if you want consulting, this is those one-on-one -on -one conference calls with our team of developers. Um, and then you can ask them those uh, questions about how do I fix this feature? How do I update this? Um, and they will be able to answer those questions on call with you and help you build your app the way you want it designed um, and giving you those best practice features. So sometimes I like to call this the phone a friend option. Um, if you need um, someone there to assist you as you're building out your applications. And then lastly, we have our development services. So if you're at the point where you've built your suite of apps, you've got all of them up and running in your business, but you don't have time to maintain them or manage them anymore. We have a team of developers dedicated for that. Um, and so um, what those services include is we have milestone development. So this is like starting from scratch. We can build out your applications for you. Or if you already have a suite of apps and you want us to manage those apps, we have managed services for that as well. And we uh, showed you guys the system integrations there um, with Pipedream. So we have ability to add other third-party tools into your um, app sheet apps as well. All right, so next steps for you guys, if y'all want to go ahead and like and subscribe to the AppSheet Training YouTube channel, that would help us out, get, get the word out about Crew Technologies and AppSheet in general. And so that way more people that are interested in no code get the best material for um, being able to build on these cool platforms. Next, if you wanna register for next month's webinar, you can do so at appsheettraining.com slash livestream. And then also, if you're um, serious about moving forward with the apps uh, for your business or creating business automations and getting the best help out there, go ahead and sign up for your free tech talk. 
and we'll make sure um, to route you the best way um, for creating these automations inside of your business. Um, and so you can do that with the links in the description below. And with that, we want to thank you for coming to this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got a lot of value out of it. Thank you, Clark, for teaching us how to build these automations today. Um, and so, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Y'all have a great one.